Hello everybody, welcome back. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Chris. Today I'm gonna to do a video that I just wanted to do. I have no idea how many people wanna watch it. This could be a total flop, but it's just something that I really, really wanted to do. When I was first getting started in YouTube, I felt pressure to kind of do videos that would get a lot of views. Now I just want to do things that are fun for me and videos that just make me happy and something that gives me some enthusiasm. Now that doesn't mean I'm never gonna do a top 10. I enjoy those as well. But today is a video I just wanna do for fun. It's May now and the weather has really turned. It went from cold last week to blazing hot today. And this change in weather kind of made me think of what happens in May, June, and July namely weddings. And even though I am currently married, it doesn't mean it's not fun for me to imagine if I were to get married right now or in the near future, what fragrance would I wear? Or if I will be attending any weddings, what fragrance will I be choosing? And if I have time, I'm going to do a few fragrances for the men in the audience, fragrances that I think would make good groom scents. I have about an hour to film and then I have to zip off to a meeting. So I'm going to do my best to try to get through the material without going on and on and on but if you have watched me you know that I like to talk so I think I've chosen 14 fragrances that I think are perfect for weddings now with each one of these fragrances I have kind of imagined a bride that would go with the fragrance or I have imagined a scenario or a location which I think would be perfect for these fragrances that doesn't mean these are the only situations and this is the only type of bride that would work in the scenario I described it's just one other fun thing that I thought I would incorporate in this video and if this is something that you would find interesting or fun or enjoyable well let's get started so the first two fragrances I am going to speak about together because they are essentially flankers of one another and that is Lente D and Lente D de Rouge formulation. So I chose these two as perfect wedding day fragrances because they just scream warm weather wedding to me. Now let's talk about the EDT first. I started out with the EDP Entente, the one in the black bottle, and I am a big fan of that. That's probably my favorite flanker. I just, I love the pepper in it, I love the patchouli in it, and I love the warm sesame note. So this fragrance originally came out in the late 1950s, and the master perfumer at the time created a fragrance specifically for Audrey Hepburn, and it was her own fragrance. And then I think several years later, they wanted to mass produce the fragrance, and Audrey Hepburn said absolutely not that would be forbidden and so I think several years later they ended up mass producing the fragrance which I think had some tweaks in it but they named it Learn to D because in French Learn to D means forbidden thus the fragrance was born so the fragrance was yet again reformulated to the new versions that we see today so the EDT I tried the EDP I just settled on the EDT for a reason. This one has the classic white flowers of the original. This has orange blossom tuberose, and this also has the note of poppy, which I think kind of gives it a little bit of brightness. And I think this is a great fragrance to wear at a wedding or to wear as a bride because the vanilla in the EDP is toned down a little bit and the musk in this is turned up just a little bit. So it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit more airy, it's not as vanilla and sweet, and it has more musk in it. Now for an EDT, this one has great longevity, at least on me. I can get a solid, solid four to six hours, no problem. And if you wanted it to last longer, you could just decant it or overspray. Now, I think most people would probably choose the Rouge as their fragrance to wear at a wedding because it's, it's a very strong fragrance. The florals are stronger. It has a real bright freshness in the beginning. There's blood orange and I believe ginger, and I get something kind of leafy in the first five minutes. And if memory serves, I'm pretty sure there's pimento or a pimento leaf in here but it comes together to put a nice spin on the, the DNA of the Learn to D. It's a very velvety fragrance. It's a rich fragrance. It is an opulent fragrance. And it is, I think it's a very sexy fragrance. It's very, very pretty. Whoever wears this will make an entrance and people will smell you and think you smell delicious. So whether you are the bride or you will be attending a wedding, I think either one of these is a great choice. The next fragrance I imagine as something a 
traditional bride would wear or a bride that wants to be timeless and who loves all things soft, pretty, powdery, and French. And the bottle just encapsulates that theme perfectly in Mon Parfum Pearl by one of my favorite houses, M. Mikalev. Just look at the bottle. The bottle is gorgeous. It just screams wedding. I don't know if you can see the real pretty pearl detail. It's just gorgeous. So this is a fragrance that has rose and peony as the stars, some very traditional flowers, but it also has some really nice fruitiness at the top. I want to say there's blackberry, maybe some orange, but it is through and through a powdery fragrance. This also has heliotrope in it, so as it dries down, you get into the florals, and then you get into the real powderiness. It's powdery all the way, but really gets powdery in the dry down, and it dries down into a sweet powdery musk. I'm fairly certain this has vanilla in it because it dries down very sweet, very powdery on me. This is by no means a gourmand, but it just has a real nice sweetness. So you really need to be a fan of the powdery florals, but if you are, this is a gorgeous scent and the epitome of French class and elegance. So I don't know how one makes a wedding day fragrance and does not include this next one in it. This to me just screams wedding and it is the classy, none other than Delina. Now I have Delina and all the flankers, but I chose the original for a reason. I personally wear Delina Exclusive the most because I've been wearing it over the winter and the springtime, but it is not something I think I would want to wear when it's hot today. It was 93 degrees and I cannot imagine wearing that very beautiful but heavy fragrance in the heat and the humidity. I think it would be a little bit too much. Whereas the original, the OG, would be much better. It has that greenness, that little sharp greenness that I know a lot of people love. You've got that beautiful rose peony, and it just makes a classic, quintessential wedding fragrance, whether you are the bride or you will be attending the wedding. I would wear this if I was in my 20s. That's just me because this is such a youthful, innocent fragrance. This is, this says, I'm starting out. This is for the person who's always happy, always optimistic about the future. The glass is always half full, never sees anything negative. That just kind of screams Delina to me and the person who wears it. So this is just the ultimate happy starting out perfume for a wedding. I also think it would be very, very difficult to make a wedding day fragrance and not include this timeless classic, which would be a great candidate for me if I was getting married or if I went to a wedding. And I have a sentimental story about this fragrance, and this is Creed Fleurissimo. It usually has a green cap, but this is my second bottle, and I bought the tester because I saved about $100. <laughs> So yes, this is the tester bottle, but it still smells the same because I remember it. Now the story behind this is when I was going to school, I didn't even have a few nickels to rub together. I was doing a sabbatical up in Washington, D.C., and I didn't have any money because I was staying in a very, very nice suburb of Washington, D.C. If you're aware of that area, you would know the Chevy Chase area. I was in a little apartment there, and it was in a really good area of town. And I would, I couldn't afford to go out to dinner at any of the restaurants, but as a treat, instead of going out to eat there, I would go there and grab a dessert to go. And one night I went into this really nice restaurant I got my dessert, I remember what it was, it was a cheesecake, and I was walking out the door and I smelled this amazing aroma, this beautiful perfume, and I stopped. I knew where it was coming from, it was coming from the bar, and I could tell who it was coming from. It was this beautiful woman, just gorgeous, long blonde hair, dressed to the nines, very professional. I walked up to her, she was in the conversation, I waited, and I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, excuse me, you just smell so unbelievably amazing. May I ask what you're wearing? And instead of chiding me for interrupting her conversation, she got a big smile on her face and she proceeded to tell me the story behind the fragrance she was wearing, which was Florissimo. And it is the fragrance that was created by Oliver Creed for Grace Kelly when she got married, I think in the 1950s. This was her fragrance and they subsequently made it into a all-time bestseller for them. But this is the epitome of a wedding day fragrance, and I think it is still so unbelievably classy some 60 years later. This definitely has white flowers in it, and I'm sure there's 
orange blossom, tuberose, maybe some gardenia, but it does have some real greenness in it. And I think it's from violet leaf, but there is a definite greenness in it that is almost too much for me. I'm not into fragrances that have a heavy greenness to them. This takes me right up to the edge of the greenness. And I think when I was much younger, I could wear these heavy floral fragrances that were more green. I have become less and less a fan of the green notes, but this definitely has a greenness to it. It's very, very strong. So it is clean, it's a little bit soapy, and it's slightly salty. And I think that's from the ambergris that's in the base. Ambergris can make things a little bit salty and somewhat aquatic, so it has that vibe to it. This thing is an utter powerhouse. You will get noticed, people will smell you across the room. I still think this is very unique. I don't know anyone who wears it because it's probably a little bit on the vintagey side, even though I'm not a huge fan of vintagey fragrances. Although it's vintagey, still smells appropriate and it doesn't smell dated. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, and I'll probably tell you in the end what my top maybe four or five picks for myself would be, what I would consider wearing. This would definitely be in the running for sure because I know I would be choosing a timeless classic fragrance. The next fragrance you have never heard me talk about, but you have heard me talk about another fragrance in the same line or by the same house and it is the House of St. Rose, and this particular one is called Juliet in White. Now, I have spoken about Vigilante in the past, and that is a fragrance that I wore over the colder months. Juliet in White is a perfect wedding day fragrance for someone who is very eco-conscious, someone who takes tremendous pride in living their lives sustainably, using sustainable products, and wanting to support brands that promote that ideology. So St. Rose is the patron saint of gardening, and so there is a reverence to the earth. This is a luxury, clean brand that takes tremendous amount of pride creating beautiful fragrances that are clean, that are transparent, and that are sustainable. The brand was originally, or the idea was created in Australia. I think the founder is originally from Australia, but now lives in New York. So the fragrances are created currently in New York. And I wanna say 98% of their ingredients in here, they're either recycled or upcycled. In other words, they are natural or naturally derived. I love how this brand recycles and upcycles materials that would otherwise be discarded. In addition, I think once you're done with your fragrance, the bottle, you can send the bottle in and they will refill it for you so it is refillable. And if you're like me and you get the discovery set, you get um, a certain amount off your purchase of your first bottle. So that's a very, very nice thing. And I'm not sponsored, I bought this bottle myself. But I just really love the brand and I love what they stand for. So out of their fragrances, this is by far the most floral and it is a really nice White tea, I love the way this smells. I don't, I don't have anything that smells like this and if you got your nose on this, you would recognize the uniqueness. Nothing else smells like this because of the materials that they use. This has um, white tea in it. So there's white tea. It's very fresh. So this has white tea, this has florals, and this has a base of sandalwood and musk. So in addition to the white tea at the top, I could smell this all day there is pepper and tangerine. The florals or the essential oils that they use are jasmine, sambac, and rose. And I would just say it, they don't smell like the typical rose and jasmine. And I know this because they're using different ingredients and they may have been upcycled. This may be upcycled rose or jasmine essential oil, which they tend to do. And the base is sandalwood and a gorgeous botanical mud. This is ambrette. It's a very strong ambrette. It's a very strong botanical musk. And the sandalwood that they use in all their fragrances is from a sandalwood farm that I wanna say is 50% indigenously owned in Australia. But anyways, this is a very bright, it's a light, airy, floral scent with a little bit of tea, a smidgen of pepper, gorgeous musk, and sandalwood in the base. So the people that I see wearing this to a wedding are people who, again, really want to embrace this type of product, 
but also somebody who wants, who's a touch on the cutting edge side. They don't want to smell like the next person because I promise you, you probably won't run into somebody wearing this because it is a smaller, more exclusive line. I bought mine straight from the website, but I know they sell this at Bergdorf's as well. If you did want to sample it, I would definitely recommend getting hold of their sample set because they have a lot of lovely ones. I have two full bottles and I will be getting a third sometime in the future, maybe the next couple months. But a gorgeous one, Juliet and White. The next one is kind of the definition of a happy, uplifting floral and it is called Fleur Narcotique. I just wore this a couple days ago and it just made me happy. I was happy all day wearing this fragrance. It is just happiness and sunshine in a bottle. So you have, of course you have florals. Now there's going to be a common theme here. Most of these are going to be floral based. So there's peony, I want to say orange blossom and jasmine. There's something slightly aquatic in here. I'm kind of surprised that there isn't lotus or water lily because I get some sort of aquatic, aquatic floral. I do not think that that as a note is in here. There is a lovely slight sweetness from the peach and there is like a splash of citrusy tartness. It's definitely a little bit tart in the beginning, but the orange blossom and jasmine to me really are the most prominent. I have in about a week, I'm gonna have 50 or 60 peony bushes in my backyard. And I think that's one of the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. The scent of that flower doesn't match the enormity of the bloom because you have this big, huge bloom that's the size of my fist and it has a very subtle scent, at least the ones that I have in my backyard. I know this is supposed to be peony forward, but I really get more of the other flowers. This also has lychee in it, which I love, and it doesn't give me a headache. I think this fragrance is absolutely perfect for spring and summer. I would definitely wear this as a potential bride, and I would definitely wear this as a guest to a wedding. It has a beautiful dry down oak moss and musk, I believe. Simply stunning, and it could definitely be my signature scent for sure if I lived in a little bit warmer climate. The next one I'm choosing is one of my all-time favorite florals. Just the bottle itself looks like wedding day. This is a fragrance that when I wear it, I literally have people, my friends, my colleagues, just, I hate to say the word swoon, but that's literally what has happened when I've worn it before. Some of my friends will just say, oh, the eyes will roll back and say, you smell so good. And I originally smelled this on someone else. I thought they smelled amazing. I asked them what they were wearing and I procured a bottle and I've been wearing it ever since. I think it's gorgeous and I would easily wear this to a wedding if I was invited to one in the near future. And it is my good girl gone bad. I mean, just look at it. It just looks like wedding day. This is, I just, even after so many years, I think this smells so amazing. A bunch of florals, jasmine, tuberose, there's may rose, there's narcissus, but the magic sauce, the magic ingredient in here is what I think gives its uniqueness is osmanthus, which makes it smell apricot -y. It gives it a very noticeable apricot overtone. It has a real pretty sweetness, an absolute ambery sweetness that isn't thick and heavy. This is a light amber and it has a dry woodiness in the base. There's cedar in here that kind of anchors it and brings everything together. And this is one that I definitely have to overspray when I wear it and I'm an undersprayer. I really kind of douse myself. If I douse myself, I'm going to get most of the day, well, at least a good solid half day. So doesn't matter, it's still so pretty. I would absolutely wear this as a bride or as a guest to a wedding. The next one is the only Roja that I have on this list. And I did the Discovery set, the Essence line, and I enjoyed all of the ones in the line. I, well, I think one of them just didn't jive with me. It did not go with my skin. So I didn't care for one. I really liked them all but the, I just could not get those to last more than literally one to two hours. And for the price, I just decided that I, I wasn't, even though they came in those real pretty purple bottles, it just wasn't a good fit for me. However, when I smelled 51, I immediately fell in love and said, this is the fragrance for me. I want it, but I want it in something that's a little bit stronger. If I can get it in a stronger formulation, I'm going to pick up a bottle 
And that's precisely what I did. I bought it in the Parfum. This is for the person who wants a beautiful, luxurious, and refined fragrance, but does not want to over power those around them. I imagine the person wearing this kind of in everyday life always dressed nicely but never wears anything where the label is showing. It's not a show off, has nice things but will never tell you about it, never tells you how much they make, never brags about the good things in their life. These, this person is classy and understated but has a good sense of the nice things in life. So Roja is known for having his fragrances with lots of flowers in them, lots of ingredients, lots of notes. I mean, if you were to pull up most of his fragrances, the list of notes is quite extensive, and there are a ton of flowers in here. But what I mainly get is a beautiful floral with a nice Ylang note, and Ylang is one of those florals that's very safe for me, and I think Ylang just, Ylang Ylang screams spring and summer. It just screams hot weather. There's also a, a raspberry note in here. Raspberry makes me a little bit nervous. It's hard to do raspberry well without it coming off syrupy, cough syrupy, or artificial. The raspberry in here is perfect and gives it just an ever so subtle, fruity sweetness. So this does have a really nice sweetness in the dry down. There's vanilla, oh, it smells so good. If I wasn't wearing any some if I wasn't wearing a perfume already, I would spray myself, but this has a real pretty sweetness in the dry down, but it is not sweet at all. It's not a gourmand. It's just a floral with some sweetness. There's vanilla, sandalwood, and it has a touch of spices. I definitely get a little bit of cinnamon and maybe, maybe a little bit of clove. And that's it. Just a touch. Just an overall stunning fragrance that I would definitely see myself wearing as a bride or wearing to a wedding in the spring or summer. Even though this is the parfum, it is still on the quiet side, particularly for a parfum. Doesn't matter, I would definitely overspray myself. I do overspray myself when I wear this and put a little decant in my bag. But I mean, look at this bottle, it's so pretty. The next fragrance is for my destination wedding. Whether you are a member of the wedding party or you are a guest, because this next one is just destination wedding fragrance all the way. And it is the beautiful Ylang in Gold, another one by M. Mikalef. Now, I held out buying this fragrance for so long because a fragrance I wore for years called Casimir by Chopard to me smelled very, very similar to this. And I went through three bottles of cashmere. And I don't know if you saw my very first declutter, but I, I would wear that and then I wouldn't wear the fragrance anymore. Then I would get rid of it, give it away, and then I would miss it and I would buy the bottle again. And then I would never wear it. So then I got three bottles of it and I finally got rid of it last year. But I gave this one a try. I got the travel size. And at first I thought it's too similar to Casimir to buy a bottle of this because it's on the pricey side. I kept wearing my travel spray and I kept wearing my travel spray and I kept wearing it and noticing subtle, subtle differences. So there are differences, there's no doubt, but they are very, very similar. So true to form, I'm still wearing that fragrance all these years later. I mean, I've been wearing that fragrance, whether it's this one or Chopard for a long, long time. So gorgeous tropical weather destination, beautiful wedding fragrance because this is a floral gourmand. It didn't make my floral gourmand video that I just did last week because it was like out of sight, out of mind. I have all these ideas for videos and I put my perfumes in different baskets for each video. And if I don't see the perfume, because I have a fairly sizable collection, if it's in a basket and I'm, I don't see it when I'm picking out my fragrances, I'll just out of sight, out of mind, I'll forget about it. But this is one that could have very well easily made my floral gourmand video. This is a floral gourmand. This is all about the ylang as the, as the name states, but there's also peach and lychee in here, which gives it a little bit of a tropical fruitiness. So you have this strong ylang, you've got peach, lychee, just gorgeous warm weather, tropical vibes. And it has this beautiful vanilla and coconut in the dry down, which makes it this gorgeous tropical warm weather floral gourmand. It is just stunning. If I went to a destination wedding or if I was a destination bride, this right here would be my scent, no doubt. And 
I love supporting M. Mikalev because I just, they're just such nice people and it's a great house, great customer service. I bought this bottle myself, but I just love buying fragrances for them from them because they're so nice. And their fragrances smell phenomenal and their bottles are just works of art. I'm so proud of myself. I am making great timing. I think I'm almost done. And it's only been 30 minutes, nothing like a meeting that I have to go to to make my motor mouth speed up. But anyways, the next one is my most recent acquisition. It is thanks to a lovely YouTuber, the beautiful Anna Lauren. She is just one of those rare triple threads. She's beautiful, smart, and funny. She has a very discerning nose. She's very, very good at picking out nuances of fragrances and she's very very picky so if she likes a fragrance that i have kind of turned my nose to <laughs> i'll give it a second chance that's how much i trust her so this next fragrance there was tons of hype around this about two years ago and i think it was from demi rawling i think this was like her signature scent and it was supposed to be or it is a white floral bomb so for those two reasons I really didn't have any interest in trying it. And also it's a very pricey fragrance. So that was enough for me. I just felt like my life was complete. I didn't need to purchase it. And then Anna was talking about this in one of her videos and she just made it sound so good. And she was so kind, we did a little sample swap and I could not believe how much I loved it when I smelled it. And it is the beautiful Rouge Malachite from Giorgio Armani. The interesting thing is, or the thing that baffles me is why this is in a red bottle. I mean, the red bottle's gorgeous, but this should be in a white marble bottle with the gold plate because this is a white floral bomb. If you are like me and never smelled it until recently, this is a sweet, ambery, white and yellow flower fragrance. So the flowers in here, you've got tuberose, orange blossom, and ylang ylang. I believe that the tuberose is the strongest. I definitely get orange blossom in the dry down. I can smell the orange blossom in here, but the tuberose is the strongest, no doubt. So this is very creamy, luxurious. It's a little tropical. There's a slight pepperiness at the top, and I wanna say there's some aromatics and I do think that there's pepper or pink pepper, which imparts a real nice brightness and gives it a little bit of a unique edge. So this is not like your every other white floral out there. It's just luxurious and velvety and creamy and smooth and extremely strong. Powerhouse, if you want a fragrance that's gonna get you all day long, this is definitely the fragrance for you. Perfect fragrance for a bride, Perfect fragrance if you want to attend a wedding. This is just a lovely wedding day scent. Down to the last three, but the next one, the third to last one is another fragrance that I had no interest in trying. It was another strong white floral. I thought, nope, that's not for me. And then when I got my packet for Scent Explorer, I saw the box, the Emwage box, and it was one of the last samples that I tried because if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that Emwage is a house that I have to test. I've had some disaster blind buys and I'm never doing that again, but I tested this fragrance and it was just like immediate love. And the bottle, the juice inside screams wedding or wedding day and it is Honor Woman now. I bought another tester, this is a tester. Now I kind of regret it because it's just, the cap of these bottles is so pretty. But I bought the tester and it's still a gorgeous scent. So this is a fragrance that actually reminds me of a wedding bouquet. Again, common theme, you've got Gardein, you've got Tuberose, Jasmine, and Lily of the Valley. I don't think anything else that I have up on the mantle has Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley I've always loved, and there's a definitely detectable Lily of the Valley. I get that, and it imparts a greenness to it. It gives it a little bit of a greenness, but it is not sharp. There's also rhubarb in here, and again, those two notes could go poorly on anybody. They could just not work out well. It's green, but not too green. So it's green, but it's not sharp at all. There is the lightest, dusting of spices. Another floral with some spices. So there's pepper and I wanna say coriander in here. And I didn't get that at first, but when I knew that they were in the fragrance and I closed my eyes, then I could get it. But it's so 
light. It's almost like you have pepper and coriander that were just pulverized into a dust, and that dust was just kind of sprinkled over the fragrance. So it's just this very light dusting of spiciness. And in the dry down, there is amber, there's vetiver, and leather or suede. And it's very, very subtle. I really don't get it at all. I think I want to say I detect it because I know it's in there, but maybe, maybe just imparting a uniqueness and a warmth. This is definitely not your everyday floral. It is unique to the other florals. So maybe that leather or suede accord gives it a little bit of the uniqueness and it goes well with that very light dusting of spices. Like all Amouage fragrances, this is a beast. This is very strong. This would be in my top five. Easily wear it to a wedding. Easily would wear it as a bride. Down to the last two. I'm going to finish it and make it to my meeting on time. This one is a perfect fragrance. If you were like me when you first started out and you had a very, very limited budget and you had to buy a wedding fragrance that did not cost very much. Even though I don't wear this fragrance really ever anymore, I absolutely love the bottle. The bottle screams wedding day to me. It's just a perfect fragrance for somebody who has a very limited budget and wants a beautiful bottle and a lovely fragrance and they don't mind that it doesn't last very long. I imagine somebody wearing this to a, a quiet, more intimate wedding or a quiet, quaint affair. And you don't need it to last forever for 10 hours of festivities. And that is the beautiful Bella Rosa by Oscar de la Rente. I mean, I think everybody knows what the bottle looks like, but it's just so pretty. And the bottle alone made me want to get the other flankers. There's one in white and a gold one, but I just stuck with this and I like pink. I actually wore this yesterday. I wore this right before I went to the gym and I don't like wearing fragrances to the gym. That is the perfect way to get me to never wear a fragrance again. If I get hot and then the fragrance gives me a headache, that's it. I can think of two fragrances that went out the door because I wore them to the gym and then I got hot and it gave me a headache. But this one didn't. So it is a rose forward floral. I think there's freesia in here. It has a really nice sweetness from orange. It has a real bright happy juiciness. It's very fresh, it's very sweet, it's very creamy, and it's a little bit powdery. I probably imagine this has some little bit of amber in it or some vanilla because it is sweet. Again, I think most of us know, or if you don't know, this has really bad lasting power, like four hours tops and you have to overspray it. But a lovely wedding day floral in the right situation. And my last one is the fragrance I'm wearing right now. I just couldn't help but douse myself in it right before I started the video. I usually do that. I usually spray myself with one of the fragrances I'm going to be talking about and I douse myself in the, well, you don't have to douse yourself. I sprayed twice and I smell amazing. And it is another fragrance by the house of EBK. If you've been to my channel before, you know I absolutely, that house is one of my favorite houses. If you've seen my Instagram, you know that I have almost every fragrance in the collection. I have all but two bottles, but this last one is probably the fragrance that I would wear today as a bride or if I was going to be a guest at a wedding and wanted to smell absolutely spectacular, have it last all day and smell like no one else. And it is the gorgeous Ruby and Vanilla Neroli, again, and their stunning bottle. So to me, I don't think I've ever spoken about this fragrance on camera. I have posted it to Instagram, but I don't think I've spoken about it on camera. Maybe I spoke about it in a haul, I don't know, but because I've had it for several months. Anyways, this to me is two fragrances. It is the beautiful EBK Vanilla that is one of my favorite vanillas, that rich, velvety, thick, gorgeous, luxurious, spectacular, one-of-a-kind vanilla that I've never smelled before. And then, so that's 50% of it. And the other 50% is a completely different fragrance. It is a bright, uplifting, neroli orange blossom fragrance. So you take the two fragrances and you combine them and you get this utterly spectacular fragrance that just smells like these two beautiful fragrance worlds came together to make a spectacular creation. It is, to me, this is meant to be worn in the warmer months. I could easily have this as a signature scent if I live somewhere warmer, but because I live in a place that is cold six months out of the year, this is meant to be worn, in my opinion, 
in the spring and summer or somewhere where it's warm out. If you live somewhere where it's warm out all the time, or if I lived there, I would be dousing myself in it. The house of EBK does fragrances like no other. They're just other level as far as the way they combine their fragrances, the seamlessness of the fragrance. They're just velvety, luxurious, spectacular, utter masterpieces, and they all have unbelievable performance. 10 out of 10, like you can spray yourself a handful of times, and I guarantee you, you are going to be smelling strong and amazing for 10 hours solid. I go easy, I go two to three sprays because it's that strong. If I had to choose one right now, I would choose this one. And so that's how I'm going to end the list. And didn't I say I was gonna give you my top five? Well, now I can't give them to you because after I've run through them again and smelled them all again, they're just all spectacular. But I think this one kind of ekes out the rest of them today. It is a hot, sunny day today, so it's just perfect. So in closing, I would love to hear about the fragrances that you would choose as a member of the bridal party or as a guest at a wedding if you were to go to a wedding anytime soon. I'd love to hear about it in the comments section again. As usual, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for all the support you guys give me, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.